the crew that flew this airplane yeah. came to Tucson in 1983 had a reunion. Oh, wow. And told the story. So they put this, this plane was manufactured in Wichita. It's a Wichita plane, got it. And came out in 1945, was sent to Kearney, Nebraska for armament. Yeah. And the crew from the Philadelphia area came to Nebraska by train. The pilot got married in Lincoln, Nebraska before they took the plane. The, the uh, bombardier signed a chip for $695,000 and off they went to San Francisco. <laughs> From there they went to Honolulu and then to Guam. And they landed in Guam uh, just as the airfield was being reconstructed. Yeah, and so yeah they that flew, was right after they... They flew the airplane 32 missions out of Guam. No way. Uh, and it was kind of the picture postcard of the airport. The postcard for a, the airport. This is a picture of the artist that drew a picture of this airplane oh, wow. in watercolor and it then became a postage stamp. <laughs> and uh, this is the crew. Oh. And they were on board this airplane in 1994 when it was towed into the hangar. And they're the ones that raised the money to put the airplane in the hangar. <laughs> it's a beautiful airplane. So and they're all That's awesome. except perhaps uh, one guy from Wilmington, Minnesota, who was the, one of the gunners on board. They, they, he told everybody he was 17, then, but he was probably 15. <laughs> and he's the only survivor. So what a piece of history. Yeah. What a piece nice plane, a nice history. Everything is in that airplane. It's it 100% totally complete. Intact. Wow, wow. Totally the bomb site. Uh, it's got the Norden in it. It's got a Norden bomb site in it. Oh, man. It has a little food cart in the back. Uh, this is the first plane that that could carry a food cart. It had a generator back there to keep the food warm. Yep. The average flight time for this plane from Guam was 16 to 18 hours. Uh, they so you said this plane flew operational missions. Operational missions. So like we're talking over Japan, yeah. Over Japan. So On the 13th mission. Yeah. <clears throat> they had an oil leak in number four. They hit a. They had a flak hit in number three. So. So this plane seen. This plane's so been got, under fire. <laughs> oh my they goodness. They got uh, number four restarted. So they decided <laughs> to get back into formation, and as they rose up. They hit the bottom of another B-29 and drove seven feet off the tail. So now they could only mani manipulate by engines. They landed at Iwo Jima. No, yeah. <laughs> they landed by Iwo Jima and they repaired the tail enough to get back to Guam and flew another 13 mission. What a history. Unbelievable. And this plane flew in the last mission of World War II. After the bomb fell, uh, the second bomb, they had a second raid on Kyoto. A munitions plant, and yes, then sir. after the war, yeah. this flew, uh, flew uh, uh, supplies into POW camps in the Philippines, and then it was sent back to the Sacramento in October 1945. Oh my goodness! This plane has been in a mid-air collision, it and has it's about still 100 and about 105 holes in it. 105 holes. Yeah. From pat so you patch the holes when you got back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mostly yeah. underneath. Particularly the bomb from the from the, from the flak. Yeah, yeah. That, that leaves a couple of holes yeah. in aluminum. And that's time I checked. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it, this this is one of our few planes that really uh, really has a big war history. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah. I can't I can't even believe that. That's unbelievable. Chuck, yeah. thank, uh, Charles, thank you so yeah, much. Chuck. Chuck, yeah. Chuck, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Wow. This plane for missions over J over Japan. That's unbelievable. See. Ya. The B-29s, you know, I know most about it. It's boxcar and Enola Gay, right? Yeah. I like boxcar. Boxcar is my favorite because the guy, I'm from Massachusetts. There's a guy from Massachusetts flying boxcar, yeah. um, Chuck Sweeney. Right. So I like the, I like those planes, but like in terms of like B, the B, all, the, all the B other B-29s that are around, I don't oh, know that yeah. much about, but no. Well, there, are, there were 3,980 of them built. 3,900, okay. And they're, they were built in Wichita, Renton. Uh, Renton. Yep. Washington and in Omaha. There were a few built uh, in South Carolina that they were used for mm -hmm. radar yep. control. Yep. Uh, there are two flying dock and TP. Yep. And there yep, yep. are 24 yep. museums in that city. That's all the yeah, that's better than better than better than what, what happened to the B-24. Is there's one of those? Uh, there's one, one flying. Yeah. The calling. And then one, the yeah. B-36 that's out on the line. Oh man, that uh, six turn and four burn. 315 of those buildings. There's only three left. And we have one of the three. 
That's a picture of the B36 yeah. and the B29. Yeah, look at that. The B30, the Convair B36 is out there, guys. Unbelievable. The, and then there's a. Uh, I think that guy a little bit overweight. It might be a little fat. Yeah. <laughs> might be a little fat. The gross takeoff weight of the B29 loaded was 135,000 pounds. And Colonel Chibbets took off with the first bomb, he was 152. He was 17,000 pounds over the I mean, that thing probably didn't fly too well. Uh, we have a little booklet about it. But yeah. At the end of the, run, end of the runway, Colonel Chibbets asked the bombardier if we were flying. <laughs> and he responded, we're either flying or we're swimming off the path. Yeah. <laughs> I believe that. Didn't they need, for, for the Fat Man, didn't they need uh, a tinny and they had like yeah. a custom loader? Like yeah, they, they, had they had a, a bay. Yeah. And a hydraulic lift. Yeah. Lift the bomb the Fat Man can't fit under this thing. No, into the front bay. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Well, thank you very much. You're I appreciate welcome. it. I'm going to go look around some of these other nice pieces of hardware. Unbelievable. Thank you for your time. <laughs> He's a Ghostbuster, I swear. Look at this. A C-46. C-46 Commando. Can you tell me about this? I know nothing about they, this. They were used to fly the hump. So that was the biggest thing they did. So the Burma Trail. Oh, okay. And they, and they yeah. flew the hump. That's really, that was their strong suit. Um, Ice Pilots, a group out of Canada that does that has the, they fly C-46, they fly C-46 and the DC-3s. Uh -huh. This one just can hold way more, but it's an incredibly temperamental airplane. Yeah. Real. Yeah. There's so many planes yeah. around. Yeah. Well, there's a couple of them in the corner that I have never heard of before. Okay. Yeah. So, so let's get to the ones that we do know. Let's see if we can go down here, Saber. How's the? Here, let me check chat. How's the signal holding it's up, guys? It's spinning enough. Right now, it's actually pretty good. Okay. Burma, China, India theater. Thanks. Look at. Uh, so this is a Curtis, right? This is yeah. Douglas. Yep. We got the, you got the whole interview? Nice. <laughs> They've got a link trainer too. <laughs> What's that? A link trainer. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, heck yeah. Look at this thing. F-86. Yeah, man. Okay, look at this thing. Let me read here. This plane flew in the Korean War. Cool. Hey, Sabre. Yeah. It's a Sabre. I know. Okay. Oh, that's a shiny boy right there. It is. Look at this thing. That's crazy, dude. And then it's its Korean War counterpart. Old adversaries. Look at that thing. Do you know that the Millennium Falcon's canopy in Star Wars is from the B-29? I believe that. Mm -hmm. MiG-15. Look at this thing. Oh man. Freaking MiG. This one's really good right here. Really? Yeah. Alright. 5,000. I ain't even mad. No. Signal. Yeah. Sure. I don't know the signal right here, but yeah. Because that's what that's what we were in before. Look at the guys. Who can tell me what that signal, what that what that roundel is? I guess we'll just be able to see it. Guys, guys, know what that is? DPRK, that's a North Korea, that's North Korean parking. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, there's that. All right, let's go. I know I know you guys want to see this, so I'll just get out of the way.
I don't need to tell you what this is. You know what this is. Huh. Interesting smuckers. Late model Corsair. Yeah. F4U Corsair. A lot of people really like this plane because of its gull wings. See? They couldn't they couldn't use a straight wing on this plane because the props were too long, so they raised them, they raised it up and gave it the signature gull wing. These planes were widely used in the Navy. They were used in the Pacific Theater a lot. They're Navy planes. So this is uh, this this thing would have I mean not this one. This one is uh, this thing was used during training in World War II, but this thing would have uh, would have been flying off of the deck of the straight deck carriers from the 40s. But the rock star. Oh wow. P-51D. North American P-51. One of the best fighter planes of the war. Yeah. Two over here? Yes. That's the number three D-52 video. NASA. Oh really? And it was the one that dropped the X-51. Oh it dropped the X-51. Oh. Okay. Jaeger. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that that dropped uh, that thing. the mm -hmm. the X yeah the, yeah the, uh, fast. And outside is a uh, seven 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 yeah. that came to us from uh, Cathay Pacific. Yes, sir. That's the number one seven 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 bill. The first seven seven seven. And then seven forty seven is a series one hundred seven forty seven that GE gave us. The DC ten is the number three DC ten bill, and that was given to us by August after it flew for United and then. 18 years in Norvis. And that plane is, is completely equipped. No. The 747 out there, the one that it says GE test propulsion yeah. on the side. Yeah. Is that the, the 747 that they used to test the GE 9X? Mm -hmm. So it's the only, they put a 777 engine on the 747. Probably, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's crazy. And then there's, there's right outside that door, there's yes, a little Adams aeronautical airplane. Yeah that they built four of them in Denver and it was supposed to be revolutionized in public aviation and then he went broke <laughs> and uh, it's kind of a neat airplane. Too. Okay. Must have glossed over. We we're already outside. I'll have to uh, check it again. You no, know, I said I missed the 747 out there. I don't know why I missed it. Did I miss the 747? Down by my... It's on the other side of this. Yeah. Oh. I wanted to read about Bad Angel because yeah. I think this plane fought. Yeah, it's, it's got markings on it. Like it took them yeah. It's, it's got confirmed kills on it. He arrived in the unit in April and shot down three BF 109s on April 29th. Destroyed two more BF 109s on May 19th to become an ace in a little over the month of combat. Over the next three months, he shot down a, uh, a Mach E 202. And two more Messerschmitt before he was he, he was shot at himself by a German fighter on 19 in 1943 over Salerno, Italy. Curtis was captured and turned into POW in Rome. A few days later, Italy surrendered, and he and several other American pilots escaped from the camp before the Germans could take over. He made his way out of the Ger out of German-occupied Italy, arriving back in Allied-controlled territory on May 27, 1944. After a brief leave. Curtis volunteered for another combat tour. He was assigned a 3rd Air Command Air Commando Group, 4th Fighter Squadron in the Philippines, flying P-51, flying, flying the P-51 Mustang. Curtis arrived in the Pacific Theater on November 19, 1944, and on February 7, 1945, he was shot down by a uh, Mitsubishi Ki-46 reconnaissance plane, making him one of only three Americans to have kills against German, Italy, and Japan. He shot, no, he shot he down. Shot down. Yeah. He, wasn't, he wasn't shot down. He shot down a Mitsubishi Ki-46. While attacking the Japanese island, the Japanese island of Bataan in the Philippines and Formosa, one of Curtis' wingmen was shot down. Curtis stayed in the area to guide a rescue plane and protect the downed pilot. While they were circling, Curtis noticed an aircraft approaching to land at the Japanese base. Upon investigating, he saw it was a Douglas C-47 and it carried American markings. After several attempts to direct the Dakota away from the island failed, Curtis decided that he had no choice but to take drastic measures. Carefully lining up behind the transport, he shot... He, sh he shot out first one and then the other engine. The C-47 ditched in the ocean about 50 yards 
from the pilot Curtis have been protecting. As darkness descended, Curtis and his wingman were forced to return to base. The next morning he returned and flew cover while a PBY picked up the downed Mustang and the 12 passengers and crew from the wayward C-47, including two female nurses. Read the last line. For his actions, Curtis was awarded a distinguished flying cross, making him perhaps the only pilot to receive a medal for shooting down a friendly aircraft. <laughs> Holy cow. That's amazing. How did, so is this a, is this a replica of his plane or is this the actual one? Um, I will double check the plane today. Jeez. Are you kidding me right now? You gotta get a medal for shooting down. He had to shoot. Oh, for the, for the seven. Hey, well, it's better. Hey, better than stranded than being captured oh, by the Japanese. Yeah. They were ruthless. Barak, he shot. He shot down a C-47. He shot down a C-47 because it was going to land at a Japanese airport. They were lost. And he figured out that they were lost. And he picked their engines off. And if the plane ditched in the ocean, and it ditched, well, it ditched kind of near where his buddy was shot down. So he flew, he flew back, and then he flew escort for a PBY that came and got them. Like, dude, that's ridiculous. Did you know, yeah, it's got, yeah. No, yeah, that's right, look. It's got, it's got an American flag in the kill box. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's got an American flag in the kill box. Oh, she's leaking a little bit. Good airplanes on too. She's leaking a little bit. Get the kitty litter out. So look at this. This is a P-39 or a P-63. I can't tell. Can't tell so this is a P-63 Aracobra. This is a really weird plane. We didn't... US, it's a U.S. plane. It's, it's made by Bell, but we didn't really use these things that much. We didn't use them. We didn't. They, they, they saw limited combat, but the Soviets are actually the ones that use these things a lot. The P, but the P-30, well, that was more the P-39. The P-63 is a follow-up to it. And what the weird thing about this plane is that the engine is behind, despite it looking like a regular propeller plane, the engine's behind the cockpit, and there's a drive shaft that goes around the cockpit to the front propeller. It's a weird design. These planes were notorious for being a little bit unstable because their center of lift and center of mass are almost directly aligned because the engine's over the wings. So sometimes they can kind of enter flat spins really, really easily. Yeah, there's also a... There's also this. There's a kinetic energy experiment coming out the front there. There's the air conditioning vent right there. Among the, among the planes <laughs> oh, that were shot down. Among the planes that were shot down. Uh, the two nurses, one of the nurses on board that DC-3 that he shot down. One of the nurses that was aboard the DC-3 that Curtis shot down was a, was a nurse that he had dated the night before. So their date went bad or good? <laughs> Must have, hmm. must have been bad. Look at that, there it is. There's the engine right there. Oh, look at it, there's the cockpit. And they, put, they put plexiglass panels over this so we can see it. It's a weird design, man. The weird thing that I find so odd about these is that they remind you of a car. Yeah, it's definitely a weird plane, that's for sure. Yeah. These are weird planes? Yeah. Whoa. Oh, no way. That's a, uh, that's an Oka. A two-seater, though. Um, yeah. Guys, this is a first cruise missile. This is one of the first cruise missiles around. Um, it's a Japanese cruise missile. Um, and the guidance computer is a person. Yeah. Yeah, the guidance computer is a person. Oops. It's a trainer Oka. Which is, <laughs> I guess you needed to train people, I guess. 
Yeah, you read what this plane does? Yeah, yeah. It's got, it's got, an, it's got an ME-163 Comet engine in the back. And they would just, it's a glider, and then they drop it, and then you use the rocket engine. It's, it's, a, it's a missile with a human guidance system. Yeah, trainer. That's kind of weird. Kind of ironic. Kind of trainer. Thing. Yeah, the Oka. And then here's another good one. Hey, don't talk like that. The first cruise missile was the V1. Yeah, okay. Huh. Oh, wow. Yes. A Nakajima, look at that. The KI-115. Sorugi, serial number 1002. Wow. Wow. Um, I think this plane had a little bit of a problem in the engine department. Fuselage the K-12 made a low, made a low-grade galvanized steel. Over many years in the Smithsonian storage building had rusted. After investigating various treatment options, it determined that the best option for preservation was to leave the rusted surface intact and do not attempt to remove or otherwise tweet it. Or treat, tweet it, treat it. The engine is not attached to the rest of the aircraft due to damage to the lower front fuselage that could not be repaired without the significant replacement of original material. The aircraft's horizontal and vertical stabilizers, elevators, rudder, and wire arm have been destroyed or lost over time and have been replaced with replicas to make the aircraft appear externally complete. Huh. Wow. It's very rare that you see Japanese planes. What else do we got in here? Hey, here we go. 3350. Look at that. It's an 18-cylinder radial engine. There's just a bunch of pistons. So instead of like when you have your pistons in line, or if you have a bunch of V's, right? Uh, or you have like a V engine. This just goes all the way around, all the way around. And not only does it go all the way around, there's two rows of going all the way around. It's ridiculous. There, it's an air-cooled 18-cylinder engine. Got an extra a couple hours north and I'll give you a tour of Palo Verde Generating Station, the nation's largest nuclear power facility. I would do that, God Nukes. Yeah. It's fuel injected. No way. We've got 12 minutes left on this battery. All right. What's the manufacturer? This is a right. It's a right engine. No. Well, I don't know if it's still down there. From 203, they have. How many batteries do we have left? Oh, we still have plenty of batteries. Okay. Yeah, let's just swap it out. Yeah, daily. We don't have. We don't have time to go to the nuclear plant this today, guys. But I mean, look at this. There's a Dauntless behind us here. Yeah, and then it ever. Oh yeah, it's ever been too. No. So this is a torpedo. This is no, it's not a Dauntless. It's an A24. What is this plane? This aircraft was built at Dutch Santa Monica to deliver 1943. It was immediately placed in storage at the San Antonio Air Depot in Texas, where it remained until May of 1945, when it was declared surplus and sold for scrap. It, along with several other A24s, were acquired by a movie studio for use as wind machines. Wings and tail were removed, and the fuselage and engine were mounted on movable framework. In the 1970s, it was purchased by the Military Aircraft Restoration Co Corporation, who loaned it to Pima in 2004 for restoration and display. It's a banshee. <coughs> I don't know that I've ever seen a banshee. It looks kind of like a, a Dauntless almost. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, it slow. drove at 70 degrees. And in the Battle of Midway, this three squadrons of this airplane sank four Japanese carriers in 15 minutes with one plane lost. Yeah, and that turned the war. That turned the war. That turned the war. Because we didn't actually, lose our aircraft carriers and they it did. actually won the Pacific War. Yeah, oh yeah. Wow. If the Japanese don't lose the, what is it, the Shinano? And the, and fifth, and the fifth carrier yeah. never got back in service. They got it back to Tokyo, but it never got back. Yeah, once they lost the carrier, that was basically it. Okay, passing, I got you. And we have to go see the 
All right, let's check over here. We got a no. There's a cutaway of one. Is that a wasp major? Yeah, this is a wasp major. There it is. This is the engine that we were trying to get a look at outside. Dude, look at it. It's not. It's 28 cylinders, and they're just one row after the other. Look at the crankshaft on that thing. That's ridiculous. And the planetary drives out front. Oh my goodness. How do you design? Yeah, that's a good point. How do you design this with blueprints? Steady. I'm not going home. It's in my knowledge So these, uh, these, the 4360s were used on the B36. Yeah. It has six of these. Six. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's a B36 engine. Oh. <laughs> okay. Look at the size of those pistons. Those pistons are not small. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. Okay. That's not bad. Look at the piston rings. Look at the size. The pistons are the size of a freaking softball. No, bigger. That's unbelievable. A new engine for the first dude this weighs more than my truck with an engine in it 